Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us. This is News Channel Nebraska. My name is Eric McKay. Let's take a look at our top headlines today. The effects of Hurricane Helene still being felt in several states. That includes in North Carolina, where at least 36 people are dead. Maribel Gonzalez has more. Asheville, North Carolina, where roadways look like rivers. It's pretty scary. Uh, you don't expect it. Uh, we weren't really prepared. I thought it was going to rain for a while, and that's about it. Hard hit Buncombe County, which includes the city of Asheville, more than 150 search and rescue operations were underway over the weekend. Trees are down. We're clearing those as, as quick as we can. And a lot of the critical infrastructure that we become used to every day in normal times is, is now gone, and we have to work around it. Governor Roy Cooper's major disaster declaration was approved by the Biden administration. Many people are cut off because roads are impassable. They don't have power or communications. And many residents and business owners are dealing with a lot of damage, including the bomb salon in Asheville, where five feet of flood water flowed inside. I was able to save just a couple of things, but nothing really like uh, my my shears for my stylus um, and a couple of other like personal items. But basically everything is gone. Help is on hand. Global Empowerment Mission was handing out water and goods on Sunday, but residents know it will be a while before things get back to normal. It's indescribable. I don't know, it just was covered in litter and trees and mud and it's stinky and it was all the way up the street up here. Um, it just looks like the bottom of a river. Meanwhile, the Omaha Public Power District sending mutual aid crews to West Virginia in support of power restoration efforts there after the hurricane. The utility said over the weekend a company in Charleston is taking up their offer for support. A 16-person mutual aid team hit the road Saturday, arrived Sunday. Over 4 million customers have lost power as a result of Helene. Meanwhile, this is the third time OPPD has sent out a mutual aid crew this year. They sent crews to Kansas City after a blizzard in January and to Iowa and Illinois following tornadoes in July. In other news, law enforcement officials investigating after an Omaha police officer fatally shot a man who fled a traffic stop. It happened on Saturday. Omaha police say the man fled on foot after two officers pulled him over during a traffic stop. Police say the officers chased him through a parking lot where they say he pulled out a handgun as he scaled a fence. One officer shot him. Police said they provided emergency medical treatment before an ambulance took him to a hospital where the 22-year-old man died. An autopsy is scheduled for Monday. The man's identity was not immediately released. Neither officer was injured. The officer who shot the man is on paid leave during an investigation by Omaha police. That's according to the Douglas County Sheriff's Department and Nebraska State Patrol. A Beatrice man accused of the shooting death of a 42-year-old woman now faces formal charges. The Gage County Attorney's Office filed the charges Friday against 51-year-old Christopher Milkey in the shooting death of Tammy Leslie earlier this month. Milkey charged with second-degree murder, two counts of kidnapping, and a felony weapon count. Police responding to the scene said they broke through a door to the home to help two children aged 11 and 19 escape the house. They then arrested Milky, who investigators say was holding a 9mm handgun. We also know a bit more about the potential motive for the shooting. Investigators say they were told by one of the children that Milky was convinced that Leslie had been cheating on him and had screwed the door shut to the residents each evening for a month to keep Leslie and the two children inside the home. According to court documents, Milky and Leslie were not married, but had been in a relationship for over 20 years. A monthly report that examines the economy in Nebraska went down in August. The University of Nebraska Lincoln's economic indicator went down about seven tenths of a percent last month. Economists who run the study say that followed two straight months of increases, which they say still suggests modest growth in the state economy over the next six months. Two of the components that saw the most notable declines were Nebraska manufacturing hours, 
a reflection of a national trend and building permits on single family homes, which dropped after a sharp increase in July. The monthly studies published by the university's Bureau of Business Research. Potentially another blow to the economy, Americans could soon have trouble finding some of their favorite foods and popular products. A major port strike could start this week, preventing those items from getting to retailers. John Lawrence has the details. Days after Congress prevented a government shutdown, the U.S. economy is facing another potential challenge this week. Union workers at three dozen facilities covered by 14 port authorities from Maine to Texas are threatening to walk off the job. We're really going to start feeling this impact pretty quickly if this strike goes through. The deadline is 12.01 a.m. Eastern Tuesday, and it could be the most disruptive strike the U.S. has seen in nearly five decades. Anything beyond two weeks is going to be very, very, very disruptive. Economists say the potential strike would impact supplies of items like chocolate, alcohol, fruits, hot peppers, and European cars. A lot of the parts that would be needed to produce vehicles, let's say towards the end of this month, will be on those boats right now. And so if those don't get unloaded, you start having sporadic plant slowdowns. The International Longshoremen's Association is calling for a $5 per hour pay hike per year over a six-year contract raising the top hourly wage from $39 to $69 and keeping its current ban on fully automated equipment. If there is one way for consumers to look at this economic glass as half full, there will be plenty of gifts in stores this December. Since this was an event that we knew could potentially happen, a lot of retailers were bringing in these holiday items ahead of time. John Lawrence, News Channel, Nebraska. We talked housing earlier and a new report details just how stalled the housing market is. According to analysis by Redfin, just two and a half percent of homes in the U.S. have been sold this year. That's the lowest turnover rate in at least three decades. Some areas are suffering bigger slowdown than others. Homes in suburban and rural areas changing hands slightly more than those in urban areas. Now for months, the housing market's been facing a combination of record high home prices and elevated mortgage rates. Economists have said they hope the Federal Reserve's recent rate cut can revive the stagnant market. Hundreds of thousands of Medicare patients across the U.S. will be seeing lower prices on dozens of prescription drugs. Monday, the Biden administration announced Medicare Part B enrollees will pay less for 54 prescription drugs. Many of those drugs used to treat cancer, osteoporosis, pneumonia, and other conditions. The cuts are possible through a provision in the Inflation Reduction Act, making drug companies pay rebates if they raise Medicare prices faster than the rate of inflation. Patients will start seeing the price drops this week. A pandemic-era student loan benefit ends this week. That one-year grace period for borrowers who miss a payment will no longer be in effect. The Biden administration had provided this on-ramp period after student loan payments resumed following the three-year pandemic era pause. Uh, during the last year, student loan services weren't reported missed late or as partial payments to the national credit bureaus. Now they will be notifying the bureaus, which could impact credit scores. This change comes as the fate of the Biden administration's student loan repayment plan is on hold as litigation plays out. A hearing scheduled for October 15th at the 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. And finally, a radio station in central Nebraska completed their goal of filling a moving truck with food items to donate. It also got one of their employees off the roof. Ryan Valenta has more from Hastings. This week started with a man on a four-story building rooftop plus an empty moving truck and ended with thousands of food donations filling that truck to help feed people facing food insecurities. This ranks number one in the fact of doing the biggest promotion we've ever done. All promotion talk aside, KHAS Radio in Hastings' inaugural Heroes for Hunger food drive took an unconventional approach to field food donations. On Tuesday, morning show host Brandon J. McDermott set up a tent on top of the Burlington Center and couldn't leave until the truck was packed with food. McDermott said he came up with this unique idea due to multiple personal experiences. I was homeless as a kid in Omaha, went to 11 schools in 13 years of growing up. Um, I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like not to know where your next food is going to come from. I know what it's like to kind of feel helpless. 
Surely enough, with the help of the Hastings community, the 18-foot-long truck completely filled up with food on Thursday afternoon, releasing McDermott from the rooftop after 53 hours and 29 minutes. We are full. Come on down, Brandon. Wait, I thought you said 2 o'clock. I get to come down early? I love you, Hastings. How does ground feel, Brandon? Oh, it feels so much different than roof. <laughs> The message was just a lot of gratitude that we were stepping up to do this and the community just really came together to give and so much kindness, so much love, a lot of togetherness and we could not have done it without the volunteers and the community. After getting off the roof, McDermott thanked everyone who gave food no matter how much they gave. This bag right here feeds 16 people. Multiply that out by one box, multiply that out by 30 boxes, multiply that out by five and you've got a bunch of people that are gonna be fed by this. I mean, that, that's the realness of it. Looking at these individual boxes, these individual pieces, this is gonna be a meal for somebody. The truckload of donations were given to five Hastings area food pantries who all expressed their gratitude for the radio stations and the public's generosity. But especially as we get into the holiday season, we start to see more of a need. Cold weather season with utilities going up. You're going to definitely see a need uh, where people are facing food insecurities. And so, uh, you know, yeah, every time's a good time. This was a perfect time. While it may be the biggest promotion to help out the community for the radio station to date, plans are being formed to make it bigger and better next year. First of all, it was like, okay, let's take a breather first. But also, <laughs> how are we going to top this? And so my, my gears are already churning. Reporting in Hastings, Ryan Valenta, News Channel Nebraska. And you can stay up to date with the very latest by following us online. Head to newschannelnebraska.com. Click on the news tab there. You can also follow us on X, like us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. You're watching News Channel Nebraska.